Beagle just fell. The loss of the cathedral's bell tower on the skyline of Christchurch was a wound to the heart of every Cantabrian and every lover of the Garden City worldwide. This is a proposal to rebuild that iconic landmark. We propose to rebuild the new tower to be the same familiar size, form, and shape, but lighter and earthquake resistant. We'll be using the same time-proven, non-industrial, and sustainable methods and materials. Scores of skilled craftsmen from New Zealand and around the world will be called to fabricate and assemble the needed parts. Hundreds of volunteers arrayed in Cathedral Square will provide the power to raise the structure up to its final position. If this proposal is approved and adopted before Christmas this year, the bells could be ringing from the People's Steeple on the evening of the 22nd of February, 2013. The February earthquake dealt two blows to the cathedral. Firstly, the shaking of the cathedral itself resulted in cracks and other damage. Secondly, the quake caused the bell tower to fail. The force generated by the falling tower was roughly equivalent to 100 kilograms of TNT exploding next to the cathedral's northwest corner. That energy rattled throughout the cathedral, smashing the north aisle roof damaging columns and weakening the west wall, leaving it vulnerable to aftershocks. The spire's copper peak bore witness to earthquake damage a century earlier. The steeple could be replaced with an exact duplicate of the original built in the tradition of England with its stable geology and gentle climate. But that would again risk lives and disaster in another such quake. That being the case, it would be well to find another way forward that is better adapted to the realities of building in New Zealand. In the 16 and 1700s, the English settlers in the New England colonies were faced with building steeples along their storm-ravaged coast. That coast is punished by savage gales out of the northeast and vicious hurricanes up from the tropics. They had to come up with a way to build steeples that would stand up to a new reality that was quite different from England. When it comes to building tall structures and exposing them to extreme conditions, they only had to look as far as the ships that brought them across the ocean. Some of the lessons learned from the masts and rigging of tall ships. Keep the weight low. The higher you go, the lighter the spars. Masts are made of several sections. One section does not simply sit atop the other. There is a doubling where they grab each other, making the connection secure and resilient. Top of lower masts serves as the lifting point to raise the upper mast. Rig is built to be safely sent aloft from the deck, utilizing rigging, capstans, and muscle. Standing rigging braces the masts down to the hull. Drawing from those lessons and the rich carpentry heritage of pre-industrial England, church builders soon came up with a plan. They could make light, resilient sections that would telescope into each other so that they could be raised up from the ground. Often built of stone, the base section was built as high as the church roof. Meanwhile, the carpenters concentrated on prefabricating sections of the tower that would nestle into each other. These telescoping sections support and brace each other, doing the same job as doubling and standing rigging on a ship. The completed spire, cross roof and all, was lifted heavenward by the straining muscles of the congregation manning capstans in the churchyard. Historical accounts relate that this raising took about two hours from start to finish. Celebration followed. These wooden steeples have proven their worth. Many are more than 200 years old, having stood up to every brutal storm that has come their way. This Anglican church spire graces the skies in Newport, Rhode Island. The church and spire are in excellent repair and were built in 1726, some two years before Captain Cook was born. This method of steeple building seems well suited to the needs of Christchurch. Rebuilding the steeple rebuilds and strengthens the community. It is quick to build, could be ready for second anniversary of the earthquake, uses time-proven methods of construction that last for centuries. It is a strong, flexible light replacement for a heavy, rigid, unreinforced masonry structure. The final form can be much the same as the lost steeple in size and shape uses the Farmy Army and Cardboard Cathedral model 
a volunteer community effort in conjunction with volunteers from around the world. Uses green, sustainable, low-carbon footprint resources, human-scale pre-industrial building techniques for a human-scale post-industrial Christchurch. Lends itself to seismic considerations. This plan for the rebuilding of the bell tower at Christchurch is a variation on the telescoping steeple plan with particular attention given to being seismically stable and easy to build. To perform its new function and receive the telescoping timber sections, the remaining stone base needs repair, modification, and reinforcement. Although the current state of the bell tower is shocking and disheartening, there's much to be optimistic about. Firstly, and perhaps most importantly, the tower and cathedral sit atop some of the best building soils in Christchurch. You're blessed with the legacy of talented and careful builders that gave you an exceptionally well-built structure. The tower walls are thick and very well buttressed in two directions. These wide buttresses and deep foundations give the base a wide, stable stance. If the stonework was structurally compromised, one would expect to see obvious cracking of the plaster work of the ringing room. In these images, the plaster is smooth. Most of the force of the collapse of the stonework above would have hit the base straight down where it's the strongest. It's reasonable to assume that the base, once repaired and refitted, would be more than adequate for the proposed rebuild. That is particularly so, as the proposed spire is a fraction of the weight of the original. Sadly, the north wall of the tower had to be dismantled. However, that's a blessing in disguise, reworked into a tall, graceful lancet arch. That side of the tower will give easy access to the interior to install and assemble the telescoping sections. After the rebuild, the arch becomes a feature of the tower and part of the cathedral story. To prepare for the rebuild, the wall head would have to be demolished to a level that would allow for rebuilding in kind. The wall would then be built up to the former bell level. Any competent stonemason can handle this work, and Christchurch has several. Lastly, the base needs to be reinforced and slightly modified for its new role. A steel ring beam will be set into the top of the wall and held in place by tension rods set into anchor points low on the tower. This arrangement reinforces the tower base by putting the whole mass of the masonry into compression, thus eliminating the fear and danger of unreinforced masonry.